Uh, we're going to review a function. How many of you said this was a function? Did anyone say it's a function? Or how many of you would say it's a function? Okay, good. How many of you say it was not a function? Okay, this is not a function for many reasons, but for us, we need to understand that it does not pass the vertical line, vertical line test. It fails it, so it's not a function. Uh, it'll hit two points uh, for many different scenarios, okay? So it's not a function, but I don't want to just go over that. I want you to tell me, is it a relation? So how many of you say it's a relation? All right, how many of you say it's not a relation? Okay, let me ask that again because I think I got 10 responses. How many of you say it's a relation? Not a relation. Okay, so we have, it's pretty mixed. I think have more heavily for a, not a relation. It is a relation. And can anyone tell me why it's a relation? Yes? Because they're yeah, this is a set of, by the way, an infinite number of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs, so it's a relation. What is not a relation? Um, if you had just one number by itself, like one. It's not a relation because it's not an ordered pair. Uh, so really... No, like in a graph. Uh, you can't have it. Oh, so That's a cool thing. Anytime you have a graph, it's going to be a relation. But it could be a function or not. Okay, it's a relation. Uh, what is the domain... Now, do you guys notice I said that there were an infinite number of points? You don't have to list out all the x values, but you do have to tell me what they would be, and you have to be careful with this. Looking at my x-axis right here. Yeah, looking at my x-axis, are there boundaries for this circle? Yes. Like, does this circle have end locations, where they end and where they begin? Yeah, look at the boundaries here on the negative side, on the positive side right here. What's this boundary right here? Negative three. Okay, that's negative three. What's this boundary right here? Positive three. Can you describe that boundary using set builder notation? Yes. So the domain. X is any number such that, and then you write it. Let's see if you can come up with it. Remember, I have a boundary for this circle. <clears throat> it's not all real numbers because it doesn't go past negative three, and it does not go past positive three. But it's everything in between. All real numbers. <laughs> any, it's any real number such that, and it's a specific set of numbers. How many of you put x in the middle? Me. Yes. Did anyone put x is greater than negative 3? And equal to, good, less than or equal to positive 3? Why is it equal? Good question. Why is it equal to? Why isn't it just? Okay. Do you see these? Okay, I know it's hard to see, but there are an infinite number of points. And there's one right at the edge, right on negative 3. And what kind of circle would it be, open or closed? It'd be closed. By the way, points by definition are closed. That might make some sense down here somewhere. It's for the. always going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Like if it's a graph, it's always closed? No. Um, sometimes you're going to have graphs, and this is later on, like, pretend there's a separate graph, don't draw this. You might get these, and these are called piecewise functions. You know why they call them piece? Because they're pieces of a graph. So you might get this, and this will be in your future. So if you get that, you'll have a closed circle there, but an open circle there. Don't, don't write that down. You don't need to know that now. But you could get it. So it'd be greater than equal to, and then it would just be greater than yeah it'd, be, yeah, it'd be less than that number and greater than or equal to that other number. Yep. Okay. I do. This is awesome. <laughs> this, is, this is a privilege, guys. Not, it's not a job. I enjoy Mondays. And I hate Fridays. Actually, I like Fridays. Actually, no, I hate them. Okay, anyway. I, I'm kind of torn. What's your average Saturday look like? Soccer. Kids. Watching. Spending time with family. Like what mom and dad, my mom and dad. Oh, that's that's deep. That's I gotta think about that for years. Yep. All right, I got a good question here. I think. This is a Oh. For example, if x is less than three, does that mean that x is less than or equal to maybe two point nine nine? Yeah. And but you'd have to keep going. 
Yeah, nine, nine repeating, yes. Yeah, you could say that, yeah. Which is hard to think of. I'm gonna verify that, because that's like, oh man. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. All right, the range, you're dealing with Y. Now you're looking at the Y axis right here, the Y axis. So are there boundaries on the Y axis for this circle? What's the bottom boundary right here? Negative three. Negative three. What's the top boundary? Positive three. Oh, I don't know what I was gonna write there, positive three. So in this case, it will be the same thing. Does it, is it always the same thing, by the way? No. In this case, it is. For a circle, I'll show you how, uh, how it would change, but in this case, it's going to be this. Yeah, all you have to do is shift the circle. No, I mean, they, we do switch it up. Like, if I just did that, you'd still have the boundaries of the x, uh, being right here, but the y became now greater than or equal to negative 1, and then, what was it, 6 up, so 5 on the positive side. So it can shift, but that's where we're at. Look at that. Okay. Yes, sir? Okay. Good questions, guys. By the way, in our class later on, in the future, next year, by the way, next calendar year. Calendar year. Oh! <laughs> I like that. I like that enthusiasm. We will, we will be shifting graphs, and you can give me the equations of the circle or parabola or whatever with that. All right. How many of you are, are getting better at domain and range? Like, how many of you at least understand what we got here? Like, you can kind of understand it. Good. <clears throat> Next one. A. B, C, D, E, F. Michelle, is that a relation? No. No, whoa, that was quick, okay. No, it's not. Why not? Gracie, it's not a relation. Yeah, there's no ordered pairs. There's, there's a set and there's a set, but they're not ordered pairs. So now what we're gonna do, No. They used to call them circle mappings. They're technically oval mappings, but now we're just going to call them mappings. You can even do squares or rectangles. Well, this little, these little bubbles or little um, containers, they show you that this is a set. Like if you just put them by themselves, like are you talking about everything else around it? Maybe very specific set. Um, what are the Three ordered pairs, Sophie. What are the three ordered pairs? And you have 10 seconds. Go. A, F, B, E, C, D. C, D. Is this a relation? Dylan. Um, yeah, because we have the lines. Yes, it's a set of ordered pairs. Anna Grace, is it a function? Yes. Yes or yes? Yes. I yes. meant yes or yes? Yes. Oh, OK. <laughs> yes, sir. Nelson says yes, sir. Why? I mean, Southern W. Uh, <laughs> is this a function? Now it is, yes, because it has lines connecting order pairs. Okay, so it's a relation for that. And then, let's see, Olivia, is it a function? Yes or no? Function. Yes, Henry, why is it a function? Thank you, by the way. Because every. Uh huh. Okay, every input has exactly one. one output. This has exactly one, exactly one, exactly one. Done. All right, let's go to the function notation. <laughs> to get to function notation, we need to look back at function rules. And here's what we're going to do here uh, with this. I'm going to use this terminology here we call f of x. So this is how you read it. f of x. Um, you could have that, but we'll make it simpler than that. Awesome. Good. So this should not be new. Please remember that's read f of x. Okay, that's how you read that. You could have g of x, you can have h of x, you can have delta of x. It's really any symbol of x or any symbol of any other variable. 
Uh, delta is just a triangle. That's Greek triangle. Greek letter, delta. Uh, and the delta comes from the Nile delta. So that's the shape of the Nile delta. That's how they came up with delta. <laughs> beta is like, uh, I forget, like, it's some, ah, oh, man, beta. I think it's a B. Alpha is like an A, like a fish A. Okay, anyway, we're, why are we going through Greeks? Oh, wait, we use the Greek letters to help us in math. Okay, so if I have a function rule, if I have a function rule, y equals 4x, so this is a function because any x value that I put in, or any value I put in for x, I'm going to get a different y. I'm going to get one, exactly one y. And so let's test it out. Just say, give me a number. Nothing too hard, please. 2. All right, if I put x is 2, what's 4 plus, uh, times 2? Eight. 8. So that's uh, 1, exactly 1 in, uh, output. Uh, Matthew, give me another one. Negative. Um, negative 2. Uh, negative 2. 4 times <laughs> negative 2 is going to give me negative 8. So every input, I get exactly one output. Okay, and that's going to work. Fractions, decimals, everything. That's a function rule. Another way to write this would be f of x is equal to 4x. That's another way to write it. And so what did you replace y with? F, f of x. And you're like, who would want to do that? OK, this is the reason. It's actually a deep, it's actually like philosophical here. OK, um, remember this is the independent variable. And y is the dependent variable. Do you guys remember that? OK, so doesn't y depend on what x is? OK, this is what we're saying when we write functional notation. x is still independent. It's like its own thing. But y, remember, this is all y, depends on what? So you can't just say this is y. I mean, that's not all it is. It's whatever x is, that's what y is. And they're showing that interdependence right there. So if I didn't have this, I would just have a y. But no, they're related. There's there's an x inside of y. Almost you could say that. I don't know. That helps out. Uh, is it about this? And do you want your homework sooner or later? You want your homework sooner or later? This doesn't stand necessarily. It does in this problem, but you could use g of x, h of x. Does that, sorry, what was Doesn't that create a paradox because on one side it is itself? Yes, what did you say? Yeah. You know what? Time out. Swivel. I just had spaghetti with meatballs. And that's good brain food, but I didn't have my Gatorade to go with it. So that threw me off. I can't answer that question. No, they're not the same thing. This is x, and that's f of x. Ah, uh, anyway. What he said? No. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this. All right. If x equals three, oh man, this is not gonna go well. All right, this side is doing very, very well. I'm about to reduce your homework in half. And then I might increase yours by double. Okay, so guys, all of you facing the front. And then don't talk, guys, because I want to get through this and I want you to get started as soon as you can. All right, if x equals 3 and f of x equals 4x. I'm just rewriting it. I need a new sheet. Okay, this is what you would do. You would replace x with 3. So this is how you would write it. f of 3 equals 4 times 3. And you're like, wait, why would you do that? Because what does x equal? 3. three. So your answer would be f of 3 is equal to 4. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> there you go. 12. OK. What you're saying here is when x equals 3, y is equal to 12, right? If x equals 3, y equals 12. It's like, it's like two variables in one notation. Sorry, Andrew, do you have a question? 
Oh, that's a good question. It depends on how we feel today. We do well, have were you more. quiet? Then you can be considered in this group right here. Okay. Uh, this is not, you're not multiplying this together. This is a notation. That's why it's different. So you don't just clear it out by saying divide by three. No, this is one thing. Uh, right here. This is your answer. Yeah, you write this down. So you don't do anything with the three in the statement? Yeah, because this is, all this is telling you is that x equals three. That's it. If x equals three in this function, then y would equal 12. And you're showing interdependence here. This is, this is independent. This is dependent. That's what you're saying there. Okay, let's go to another problem. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of statements here. Okay, so y equals 5x plus 7. And y equals x squared minus 12. And that's it for now. Okay, we'll just go with that. All right, if I told you to solve for y, what would you probably ask back to me? What would you probably respond that? with that? So solve for y. And Okay, the, probably the natural inclination is to say which y. And by the way, what's x? But which y? Well, I have two y's up here. So one reason why we use functional notation is because when we use it properly, oh, yeah. Now I say find g of x. Which one are you looking at? The one to the right. If I say f of x, which one are you looking at? The one to the left. Yeah, it's, I'm saying that these are both functions, and I'm saying that this is f of x and it's g of x. I'm distinguishing the y's. They're, they're both y, but now you can say clearly, okay, that's f of x and that's g of x. By the way, it doesn't, like, that doesn't mean anything. f comes before g or g is, no, it doesn't matter. Just, it's, they're just separate. Okay, so now I want you to find this here. <clears throat> f of negative 4. Find what f of negative 4 is. Okay, so are you looking at the g of x equation? No, because no, I'm not looking for g of negative 4. I'm looking for f of negative 4. So substitute negative 4 for x. So all you need... Yeah, you just need to, you're basically just simplifying. Just make that simpler. You're evaluating. So your answer is going to be f of negative 4 equals some number, whatever you get when you simplify. So 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, plus 7 is negative 13. So you get f of negative 4 is equal to negative 13. Okay, ready? Just from this equation, what is y? What is y worth in this equation? Negative 13. What's x? Negative 4. You got x and y in, in this little answer that's functional notation. By the way, if it's functional notation, that means no matter what, okay, whatever number I put here, I'm going to get exactly one y value. Any number I put in for x, I'm going to get exactly one y value. That makes it um, a function. So, yes. why do you forget that one? Sorry? Because I was looking for f of negative 4. So it'll ask you for... It'll say f of 10. And so you're like, okay, i got to look at this one. If it says g of 10, what do you give me? Go ahead. Mr. Ray, so... Yes, sir, go ahead. Go ahead, find g of 10. I don't know what that is. Yes, sir? Why is equal to negative 13 x to negative 4? So couldn't you just put that into the one on the right and then the answer? Say that again. Say it one more time. So why is negative 13 and x is negative 4? Whoa, 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 whoa. Y is negative 13 when X is negative 4, right? Uh, In this equation up here, not that one. They're separate equations. Yeah, so keep them separate. Yeah, that's tough. I know. Okay, so is this what you guys did? And please be careful with this, especially with exponents. It can be a little bit tougher. You got 100 minus 12, which is your 88. So you got G of 10 is equal to 88. You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Sound sound reasonable? Okay. Okay, I'm going to add another step to this problem. Okay, so I, I have to go to a new screen because I don't have enough room. And I want to see if you guys can give me this. What is F? What was the number? Negative 4? Mm -hmm. 
of negative 4 plus g of 10. Let's see if you guys are thinking here. What is f of negative 4 plus g of 10? We're using the same, like, same info from that last screen. Yep, same info from back there. I just can't see it. Now you're like, what in the world is he asking me for? All right, what, can anyone answer what is f of negative 4? Negative 13. What is g of 10? 88. What do I do with those two? Add them. Or which, yeah, you subtract them. 75? Uh, so 75 is your answer. So that's going to be a problem with homework. Yeah, they're going to say, what is f of negative 4 plus g of 10? You're like, what? Well, find what f of negative 4 is in the f of x equation. Find what g of 10 is from the g of x equation, and then just add those two values. That's all you're doing. What is, that? is it always g? No, you can, use, you can use any letter. h of x. So it'll always be after that? x of Yeah, I'll be out. You got to do the first step and then do that last step at the end. OK, here's an example. Um, look at number 3 on page 99, number 3. Uh, can someone read that? Just read me the problem. It's, it's tough to read, but number, one, uh, number three, on the examples, on the examples, it's like this box, this long horizontal box. Okay, let's go with Daniel, read for me. If, oh, uh, let's go with um, Hagen, just read if. Um, if f of x, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's it. If f of x equals 5x plus oh, uh, number, th example number three. I think it's a. Oh, example. Mm -hmm. um, if f of x equals dx plus 6 and h of x equals x plus 1 squared, find 2f um, negative 3 plus 5. Okay, uh, here it is. I'll read that last part because we haven't gone through that. You would just say find 2 times f of negative 3 plus h of. 1.5. Okay, so that's kind of tough. All right, uh, what's the f of x equation, Josiah? What's the equation for f of x? 3x plus 6. All right, what's the, what was it, g or h? h, yeah. What's the h of x equation, Alex? Um, hx equals x plus 1 squared. x plus 1 squared, okay. And they say they want you to find 2 times the f of, what was the number? Negative 3 plus h of 1.5. All right, so this is the problem. You're like, uh, what do I do? First, find what f of negative 3 is. And you're like, how do you do that? Well, what does x equal in this? It equals negative 3. So what are you going to put in for x here? Negative 3. Negative three. So you're just going to solve this uh, for negative 3x. Sorry, x equals negative 3. So I'm going to put, just like I did in the last time. So you're just going to simplify that. What is that? It is negative 3. So f of negative 3 equals negative 3. What's the ordered pair? What's the order pair right here? Negative 3, comma, negative 3. That's the order pair. Negative 3, negative 3. All right, and then to find the h of 1.5, you're going to substitute 1.5 for x in the other equation. Okay, so 1.5 plus 1, 2.5. 2.5 squared. 6.25 with a decimal right there, 6.25. What do you do with those two numbers? Add them. Okay, it's said to add the f of negative 3 and the h of 1.5 together. So what's uh, 6.25 minus 3? So I got 3.25, I'm going to have to write it here, 3.25 uh, positive. And then what do I do with that number? I have to multiply that by 2, so that gets me my 6.5. So, um, if it's like subtraction or 
six. Actually, four and a half. Okay, five. Round it. Yes. Subtraction or like multiplication inside the brackets, would you just multiply the two answers instead of that? Or subtract them? Like if it was inside the brackets instead of plus, it was subtraction. Could they do that? Say that one more time. Okay, so inside the brackets on 2f of negative 3 plus h of 1.5, could they do subtraction or instead of. Yeah, oh, yeah, you could do subtraction, you could technically do division, you could do this 2 minus all that. Yep, many things you could do. Yeah, it's just a lot of order. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, so at the end, why did you multiply it by 2? Because it's the same thing. Yeah, <coughs> Excuse me. So did you get this being 3.25 right here? And so you see that 2 outside? You just multiply by that number. It's like double what that was. Okay. Um, I think I'm good. You guys okay? You guys okay with this? Ready for your homework? <laughs> uh, homework is. No, that's something that was stuck in my throat. Wow. Two, <laughs> two through twenty. Even. Oh, that's a lot of that side of the room. Yeah, look at the bright side. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you get did you guys notice what the book said on that answer? Did you see the book's answer? On that one we just did? No. This, the, sorry, that last one we just, yeah, yeah, six. They put negative 5.5. But they made a mistake because they, it was adding x plus 1, and in their work they said x minus 1. So I was looking at it, I was like, did anyone catch that? No, we were watching. Uh oh.